taking some time out of your evening uh, to come participate with us to share some of your experiences uh, and help frame everything that we're learning about the city of Nashville and the Metro Nashville environment so that we can give you all the best and most comprehensive study possible. Before we get started today, I just want to make note of a few people in the room. Uh, specifically, we have Brian Gleason from Metro, uh, Metro's BAO office. Uh, and coming to give some brief remarks will be uh, Ashford Hughes, who's from the city of Metro, Metro Nashville government. Uh, workforce development, so I'll let him come speak to you. Good evening, everybody. How's everybody doing this evening? Good evening, everybody. How's everybody doing this evening? Okay. Um, my name is Ashford Hughes. I work in the office of the mayor. I'm the mayor's senior advisor for workforce diversity and inclusion. On behalf of the mayor, we, we do want to thank you for being here on an issue that's very important to the mayor's office, uh, minority business participation. Uh, we've been working uh, very closely with Michelle Lane, who's the current procurement director, as well as uh, Brian and JaVale, uh, who work in the business assistance office to kind of find ways and see ways, what do we need to be doing uh, better currently to make certain that we're making a uh, inducive environment that is working for all businesses within our community. So looking forward to what Griffin and Strong is doing right now, and we look forward to continue to work in the community as we continue to address the business needs of communities from North Nashville to Bordeaux to uh, Green Hill. So I'll turn it back over to Sterling and look forward to hearing from you all this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Um, to get started, the Metro Nashville government has partnered with us, Griffin and Strong PC, a law and public policy consulting firm out of Atlanta, Georgia, to conduct an updated disparity study and comprehensive analysis of the Metro contracting process. The 2018 disparity study will examine participation in Metro contracts by minority, small, women, and disadvantaged businesses, collectively MW, uh, DBEs, and SBEs as well. Uh, it's the Metro Nashville's intent to render a diverse and equitable business environment that benefits all of its contractors. And we want to make sure that this process is going to be inclusive of that, to hear from you all as vendors about what your experiences have been so that we can accommodate those into the study process. Our firm has been charged with reviewing the procurement policies and processes, analyzing pertinent statistical data, collecting and analyzing anecdotal evidence, which one of these hearings is a process of, and uh, presenting findings and recommendations for this study. To achieve this, we partner with several local firms uh, that have been helping us along this way. Uh, most notably, we started off with the Atlas uh, Management Corporation, which assisted us with some portions of our data collection process. We also have, represented in the room, Jeff McKissick from the Maynard Group, which is handling our anecdotal evidence collection, some of our anecdotal interviews. And we also have our court reporter here from Harpeth Court Reporting, uh, which is a local business as well that's assisting us with this project. Uh, today, our team is conducting uh, several anecdotal interviews. We've conducted organizational interviews, sat down with several local organizations. Uh, we've conducted our online surveys, uh, our survey of business owners. We had a focus group earlier this afternoon and have solicited email commentary and different social media feedback as well to be all contributing to the study. And we want to thank you in advance of the conclusion of this hearing for your participation. Uh, the purpose of this hearing specifically is to hear the candid testimony of you all as business owners, as representatives representatives of different organizations and business entities about your experiences, both positive and negative, in doing business in Metro Nashville and with the Metro Nashville government. These anecdotes will assist us in determining whether Metro Nashville has either uh, actively or passively in, uh, provided a, a discriminatory workplace or marketplace environment for you all as small businesses. So we want to make sure that anything that's said, and I want to stress and emphasize that we are not just looking for the negative things, we're definitely open and we love to give commendations for the city and the process that they're doing and what, however they're assisting you all as small businesses. Uh, we want to make sure also that um, as we're working through this process, our role as Griffin and Strong PC as well as Metro's role as they're here, we're not here to comment or to engage in any dialogue specifically about the study. We're only here right now for this process to listen. There may be occasions where I ask additional follow-up questions just for clarity, but our role solely is to hear from you all as community members about the process. Uh, I will be around after this uh, public hearing has concluded to answer any additional questions you all might have about the process or concerns about uh, how this process is being represented, uh, but I will make sure I take as much time as necessary to make sure those questions are answered. 
Um, before concluding this intro portion, I want to just talk to you all a little bit about our process here and how this is all going to work. Um, of course, in this open uh, process, how we're giving this commentary, we want to make sure everyone is respectful of each speaker. Uh, please, for our court reporter's sake, have only one speaker speak at one time. You all, as you volunteer to, to participate and speak, you will come up to the podium where I'm standing. Uh, please give your name uh, and the name of the entity or the organization that you represent. Uh, this will help us maintain the integrity of everything that's being said this evening uh, and attribute it to the right way. Uh, everything that's said during this hearing will be available as a part of public record, uh, and all comments will be recorded and summarized for the purpose of our study. Um, like I said, this process is presided over by us as Griffin and Strong PC and not the city. Uh, please, during your comments, do not direct um, comments or uh, any questions directed towards the city. They're not here to engage you all in this process right now, but any questions as I mentioned earlier, that have to be asked or that need to be asked will be available for those after the conclusion of this process. Um, of all things, I want to emphasize being respectful of everyone's time and being respectful of the speakers. And as we are preparing to get started, I will now open up the floor for anyone who is willing to give the first testimony. Um, so anyone who is willing to give first testimony, you are available. And please, as you all are looking to approach the bench, uh, just motion to me or let me know that you're willing and available, and I'll let you know when to approach. Um, so is anyone available to give commentary first this evening? Yes, ma'am. You may approach. And again, please give your name and the name of the organization or business. Speak to you. Yes, please. Okay. Uh, Mary Lou Pampo, uh, MP Design Technology Solutions. Uh, I actually have three businesses. Uh, I have a brick and mortar, uh, also called the Wholesome Health Lounge, uh, right in the uh, heart of Music Row, and also another uh, entity within that establishment called uh, Reset, Delete, and Reprogrammation uh, Wellness Program. Um, when I first started my IT business over, uh, I think, 2014, January 2014, uh, I needed some capital, so my first approach was to look for a uh, SBA loan. I am a minority, woman-owned, veteran-owned. Uh, I'm looking towards the uh, the um, disadvantaged uh, uh, categorization also. Um, so I have all those three certifications, uh, and I just immediately expected to get incredible opportunities because of those three certs. Uh, I started looking for loans um, either as a minority-owned, as a veteran-owned, as a woman-owned business entity, and I came across the incredible a uh, hiccup of not being able to find one that required me to deposit at least 30% of that loan that I'm asking for. Um, and that was with small business, uh, small banks, uh, large banks such as uh, Wells Fargo, uh, Bank of America, and I ended up not getting a loan because I didn't have that 30% uh, cash to, to put up front. Uh, so I ended up working three additional jobs just to support one of my businesses, and I'm still doing that. I'm, I'm, my technology business is helping me support my brick-and-mortar business, um, and I'm at the point where I no longer uh, need the loan, but that would have been an incredible asset to me and my staff and to my businesses. And my question is, what are the uh, alternatives to... Uh, to, to financing a business without having to put or without having to, to require a 30 percent down payment. And I've gone to credit unions and I've also gone to obviously large banking institutions. Um, so that's, that, that, was, that was the experience I had. This was b back in 2014 and, and, and I'm grateful now that I am doing really well where my businesses are uh, staying afloat, but I'm still at the point where I'm, I'm having, especially with electricity this past few months, I'm having to now uh, basically go negative on, on, um, on payment, or well, not go negative, but I'm taking money out of my own pocket to put into my two other businesses. So that's uh, my experience as far as just um, acquiring capital when I first started. You're welcome. Thank you. 
Thank you. Was there anyone else who has uh, commentary regarding an experience uh, as their business, uh, trying to get their business off the ground, experiences interfacing with Metro's uh, BAO office or in the Metro contracting process or with organizations, et cetera? This chair, come on. Let's say your name one more time. Mary Lou Pampo, uh, MP Design Technology Solutions. So when I initially started uh, bidding or even uh, competing with, with Metro, uh, well, for Metro opportunities and federal opportunities, uh, one thing that I noticed, a there was a requirement for three to five years of past performances. Now as a brand new business, especially in the technology business, I didn't have three to five years of experience, hence a new business. Uh, and that immediately disqualified me for a lot of opportunities that I'm more than capable of, of, of doing. I'm, I've been in the military, I'm still Air National Guard uh, cyber defense now. Um, my qualifications, my resume, my certifications would have proven, uh, you know, uh, my qual that I was qualified to do the job. Uh, nevertheless, due to my lack of past performances as a new business, uh, I was I couldn't compete. So I lost grand opportunities. And now, even um, three years in in the business, my contracts now are specifically with. Uh, the DOD, nothing local, because I'm still within that uh, three to five year past performance uh, criteria that I, I don't have to, pro I, d I can't produce just yet. So um, I would I would query what would the alternative be uh, if my resume and my certifications uh, can't kind of offset that need for three to five years of past performances requirement that the city, I've come across the city uh, requiring. Um, and that's about it. Again, this is the Metro Nashville 2018 Disparity Study Public Hearings. Uh, is there anyone here that has perspective on their business formation, their process as uh, in new business development, working, interfacing with Metro in their contracting process? Uh, any opinions or perspectives or ways that they feel that Metro can improve this process? All opinions and perspectives are welcome at this meeting. Mm -hmm. Is there anyone, anyone who has a perspective? Yes, sir, you can may approach. And please provide your, your name and your business or organization you represent. Sure, Jason Carney is my name. Uh, Energy Electus LLC is uh, my company. Um, and I'm just giving a general comment and hopefully it'll find its way where it should be. Uh, but my uh, focus is in uh, photovoltaic design or solar energy design and also energy efficiency. Um, and the issue that I uh, ran into besides kind of this overall environment in, in the TVA NES uh, environment is just when jobs come out, um, they're there's like this full electrical package. It's not broken out just for the, the solar that you could bid directly on that alone. So uh, it, it, that is something I think could be better improved, things broken out and, and shown that you can bid on particularly as I have certification to design uh, solar. And uh, my understanding and knowledge is I'm the only African-American in the state that uh, certified to design solar. Uh, so. I think it would be advantageous for me uh, to see something like that. So uh, that's kind of my comment from now. Thanks. Uh, do we have anyone else who has uh, perspectives that they would like to share, commentary about ways that the process can improve, uh, commentary about ways and barriers that they've encountered, uh, opportunities that they see for the process to improve? We're welcoming all comments, both positive and negative, about the experience in doing business with Metro. Anyone have any input that they would like to provide on the record? Okay, well, thank you all. Yes, sir, you may approach. And again, please state with your name and the organization or business you represent.
My name is Renard Hirsch. I'm with the law firm of Smith & Hirsch PLC. And uh, my comment is that I've had um, uh, some clients who come who were contracted with the Metro government, and their general complaint is the payment processing time. Um, you know, they get the contract, uh, hire the number of uh, people adequate to do whatever they've contracted to do, uh, and then once they send, submit an invoice to Metro, uh, it takes time to turn that into a check. Um, and um, in the meantime, of course, the workers want their money and deserve their money. And so that puts a, um, a heavy burden on the uh, minority contractor to try to keep everyone happy and keep them on board so that they can continue to do the work. So if we can work on the payment processing, the speed of it, that certainly will, will help. Again, is there anyone who has commentary about the Metro contracting process, ways in which they feel they can improve their personal experiences in uh, pursuing contracts in the bid process with Metro BAO or with other entities in the private sector as well? All commentary is welcome and available. We want to hear from you. Uh, we're looking for these opportunities, ways in which we can incorporate this commentary into our study process. Uh, so please, if you have any comments that you would like to offer or like to give, uh, please feel free to step towards the podium and provide your input. Yes, ma'am, you may approach. Um, my name is Ilka Hanloser, and um, I own a company called IS Engineering and Utilities. We are a site utility contractor primarily. So most of the time we are a subcontractor on construction projects, which often are metro, a lot of metro projects, schools or buildings or whatever. One of the things we have run into, I've been very fortunate to have a good chunk of the work, or my fair share, let me put it that way, but one of the things I have seen is that Metro's insurance requirements are fairly standard and not too bad to handle as a subcontractor. However, oftentimes, the general contractor that is selected by Metro to construct the project has significantly higher uh, requirements that are very difficult for small business to meet. Whether it's just very high insurance, just general liability, workman's comps that are extremely above and beyond what Metro requires. So I have run into that. Um, indemnification clauses that are just ridiculous, you know, that should not be even signed by any contractor. So if Metro could maybe work on that a little bit and try to make the requirements not be so stiff on the private side to make it fall in line, to make it easier for us to compete. Thank you. Thank you all. This has been a really helpful testimony thus far. Is there anyone else? who has commentary they would like to provide on the record about their experiences, both in the private sector with doing business with Metro, uh, in the bid process, in the contracting process, we've heard some really significant issues brought up so far, things such as prompt payment, uh, financing and capital issues, uh, insurances and bonding requirements, contract language, all these things are relevant to us. Uh, if there is anybody who's willing to provide uh, additional feedback, commentary about their experiences in this process, we would welcome you to the podium now. Anyone, anyone? I know I want to be respectful of everyone's time, but I mean, I will give it a little bit longer if there's no one else who has any commentary uh, to be respectful of you all's evenings. And I know you all are probably very tired and ready to go home that we will be uh, welcome to dismiss. But we definitely want to provide more opportunity uh, for anyone prior to closing out. Is there anyone else who has any commentary they would like to provide? Great, great, great. So we will go ahead and conclude at this time the Metro Nashville Disparity Study public hearing number one. There will be an additional uh, public hearing tomorrow afternoon at 12 p.m. at the uh, Bordeaux Library. Uh, so if you are willing to participate tomorrow, you may come out then. Uh, we also opened up our email lines, uh, as mentioned previously. If you are uh, maybe just a little bit uncomfortable with talking in the public space, feel free to email us. Uh, I will provide that email address for 
for you all when uh, we conclude this evening. Uh, but you all may email us directly with any comments that you have, any concerns and any questions, and we'll also take that into consideration as a part of the study record. Uh, again, this is the Metro Nashville Disparity Study Public Hearing, and we will conclude for the evening. And I will be around a little while longer as well just to answer any questions and engage in any dialogue. I know there was a couple of questions posed to us during the, the public hearing that I will be willing to address as well. Thank you all for your evening and have a great afternoon tomorrow. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.